Hi, welcome back. My first guest is, I met him <clears throat> last year, I guess, at the wonderful 50th anniversary of the witch party that Mark, the amazing Mark Sim Simpson put on um, at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City. Um, right away, when I met him, he was just hilarious and, and warm-hearted and um, just so unaffected. And it was so nice to see because he reminded me so much of his father. And his father was Dick York, the first I uh, Darren on Bewitched. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Chris York. I'll turn it oh, on. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Chris York! That's, that's about, that's all you have? <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like growing up as uh, the son of Darren? Well. Behind the scenes with Bewitch. Were you there on the set? No, no. Dad, all, he always uh, made it uh, that he was going to work. His uh, first... Uh, priority was to his family and he went to work so he could support his family and play with us but as he did play with us um, anytime that anything happened to him on the show let's say big ears actually let me tell you a story about him. he would wear the uh, he would wear it home he would wear whatever <laughs> costume or whatever happened to him he would wear it home so um, you know what my dad looked like right he already had big ears, right? right? right. Mm -hmm. you know, so he came home with the big ears on. My brother and I were sitting watching TV, um, probably not bewitched, but uh, we were watching something. And um, he came in and he had the big ears on. So we looked up, he said, hey boys, I'm home. Turned around and said, Dad, your ears are huge. <laughs> and he said in a straight face, yeah, I know. And we said, no, 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 your ears are really big. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I know how I have big ears. And he's our father, remember? So we're, at, we're little kids, and so he's getting a little irritated at us. We say, your ears are gigantic. He said, I told you, boys, it's not nice to make fun of people's ears. I know I have big ears, and I don't think it's funny. <laughs> No, Dad, really. There's something wrong. <laughs> Honestly, your ears are gigantic. <laughs> so we, we grabbed him and took him into the downstairs bathroom and said, that's where the mirror was, take a look. And he looked in there, and he screamed bloody murder. He put his hands in, oh my gosh, I don't know what they were serving at the cafeteria today, but something happened. And we said, go to the doctor, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. And he said, nah. I'll be fine. I've had worse. We said, Are you kidding me? He said, Yeah, that's all right. So he kissed us goodnight with his ears on. We went to bed, saw him in the morning because we wanted to check on him. His ears were fine. He said, Dad, you're okay. He says, I don't even know what you guys are talking about and left for work. He never, ever told us anything different, and that's what happened. <laughs> So he would come in, come home in all different kind of makeup, whatever it was. And so after that, we finally got the point, you know, we thought, oh, okay, this is great. One, um, uh, one get up he didn't, he never brought, he did not come home in. It was when he was, uh, tr got turned into a werewolf. Yes. He didn't come home in that because he thought it would scare us. Oh. It was a little bit scary and we were just little dudes. So we would have been scared by that. So, so how many, how many children were there? Um, my brother, myself, and I had three older sisters. My brother Matt, my sister uh, Kimberly, uh, Amanda, and Stacy. So what do you think were his favorite um, performances on, on Blue Witch? Which were his favorite episodes? Did you ever? Yeah, he did tell me. He liked it when they just really goofed. When it was just like the funner ones. Mm. You know, like when, um, 
anytime Paul Lynn was on, mm -hmm. he would just come home and he would be laughing, you know, mm -hmm. still laughing from the day. Because Paul Lynn, um, I don't even know how he ever got back on the show because um, Dad told me that uh, Bill Asher was very, he was a director and he was very precise in what he wanted. Right. And he knew exactly what he wanted. And Paul Lynn didn't care. You know, he Paul Lynn was Paul Lynn. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. Right. So he would just go ahead and do it, and then they'd finally get it to the right way, but they would just laugh and laugh and laugh. Well, Paul Lynn was always breaking everybody up, yeah. and, and Bill would get upset with that, right? Yes, yes, yes. He wasn't quite thrilled with that. Right. But he was, he was awesome, right? Well, absolutely. Paul Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Arthur. Well, when I met your dad, when I had the great honor of meeting him, um, it was 1986 or 7, and I actually flew to Michigan. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that you actually went out there. I, I went there because I had called him up. I don't know how I got his I have no idea. This is before the internet, you know, before, you know, messaging or whatever. It was, you know, 1986, 87. I have no idea how I got his number. But I called him up and we just started talking and you know he was his his heart was so evolved and he was doing all this work for the homeless what was it right um actors um for um i should know better but i don't know yes, um, it's actors for the homeless or yeah something it was, like it's that. harvest crusade you know not harvest crusade but um well he was just doing yeah, all he was doing all that he working, was doing all working for the homeless As a matter of fact he would tell me he would say, um, hey, if you see somebody on the street, you know, just give them a sandwich. That was his guy. That's that was exactly it. What he's he, that was his heart. Give him that. And and I know why that you got you got to go see him. Because once you talked to him on the phone, he knew that you had a heart. He knew that you were had a heart for the show and that you were a good person. So he invited you into his world. That's all he ever did. Well, th thank you. It was it was a beautiful moment in my in my life. It was a magical moment, and he was the first, really, a star from the show that I met. So I couldn't even believe that I was actually going to meet Darren. But his the neighbors, I'll never forget it. The neighbors picked me up, and the gentleman was disabled. Do you know who I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, the Skinners. The Skinners, and he uh, he was an amazing person, and and they spoke just so lovingly of your dad. And they had been there forever, neighbors forever, 30 right. years, 40 years, whatever. Um, but I talked, uh, I had the chance to actually sit down and then we watched The Witch, I think it was uh, Thanksgiving to Remember. And there was one scene where Samantha's uh, saying thee and thou to, you know, the pilgrims or whatever. And uh, the, at one moment, you know, this one particular pilgrim, I can't think of his name. Does anyone know what the name of that? Pilgrim was on the show. Um, so she goes, she ends the, uh, the moment with him, and then Dick, your, your dad, as Darren walks up and he's in the Pilgrim outfit, he goes, I don't know you spoke Pilgrim. And it was hilarious. <laughs> and he laughed, and I'm, I couldn't believe that I was sitting down watching The Witch with Dick York, you know, and having him laugh with the show. It was an amazing moment. But the best moment that I had was when I left there, and I had called him, and I told him it was my mother's birthday. And I said, Dick, would you do me a favor? Would you call my mom and say happy birthday? And he did. And she went wild. From what I understood, she was screaming. And <laughs> someone, dude, I can tell you that he, he was honored that you would ask him to do that. He thought it was a bigger deal for you to ask him that you would think that highly of him to do that. That was a very, very humble man. He, on that show, he, anything that you have ever heard that would any kind of rumor about him being bitter or anything like that is absolutely false. That's right. He absolutely adored everybody on that show. They loved each other. That was a, a, like a, a love fest of uh, characters on that show. They deeply mourned when people died. They were Alice like, Pierce. Yes, very sad. They took care of um, of Marion Marion Lauren. Uh, Marion Lauren. <coughs> they watched out for each other. They loved each other. And when he left the show because he had to, he was heartbroken. 
he was very sad. Yeah, I know. He told me that sure. if he had he been granted that summer of '69 to rest up, he would have been able to do the show. However, he had never had any bitterness no, towards no, Dick Sargent. Zero. He, he was very happy with him. He said, "I remember him telling me. He said, wow, he's doing a pretty good job. You know what? What else is he going to say? We watched it a few times. You know, the only shows that we really want, we really, you know." took a time to watch it together is when um, Dave Mandel was on because we were we were oh my gosh we were in love with that kid it's a beautiful kid oh man I was so glad that I could meet him <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna take a little break because okay, this is a sad moment right now <laughs> so we're gonna take a little break and we'll be right back <laughs> Hi, welcome back I'm sitting here talking with uh, Chris York so no, just, uh, I'm for everybody else. <laughs> well, you know what? You you are you have such a great sense of humor, and you are so down to earth, um, and so unaffected. And it was just that was the other wonderful part, because you were like him. I mean, you you said something like um, when I asked you if you would come do the show or whatever, anything, Herb, anything. That's exactly what he said when I would I asked him for an interview or whatever. Anything, my friend. Anything, yeah. my friend. Um, he's a very spiritual person. Um, he knew things, I think, you know, because he was very, he was ill in, in the end. He had the emphysema, uh, and it was, it was a very, very difficult time for him. But he seemed to have grown spiritually in those years, even though he was always spiritual. He seemed to, because he was limited physically, I, my sense is that he went deeper inside. And By the way, Agnes Moore had loved him. Cool. And and she was a, a, a Christian fundamentalist. Right. And he was really, in many ways, New Age. Would you say that? Yeah, I would absolutely say okay. that. So, but she had such respect for his talent um, that they, they, they met somehow. But he was spiritual. And it was Acting for Life was the name of it, right? Correct, Acting for Life. So what, where did that spirituality, how did that develop? Well, how the spirituality uh, actually blossomed is from his... Uh, 40 years of chronic pain. Anybody that has ever been in chronic pain and knowing that every moment of your life is going to be painful, you have to look at things with a, uh, a different kind of attitude. And you really do. You start looking at everybody's, um, their walk in life. Like, why are they even walking that life? You look underneath the, uh, uh, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You have to look at, you know, sp things spiritually. All right, Dad, I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, you just have a different understanding of people. You know, you don't look at things through, through a harsh eye. Dad was, um, he was a child of the Depression. He knew what it was like to be um, but poor. Like, not knowing, you know, he would say that uh, uh, we didn't have a, um, a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, <laughs> right? So, and, and his life was just trying to give back to others, trying to be a better person than he was the day before. And that was his goal in life, to, to help others to be nice. It's like when you run across somebody, what is the reason to be mean or nasty or anything? Why not be nice? David, put that on vibrate. I will. Is that nice enough? Yes, yes you did. I am so sorry, that was rude. Um, so be, be nice, and so, but how, I mean, you're a, t you're a TV stuff. You're on a major hit on, on, on a new network that really was uh, made its mark by, by way of Bewitched in many ways. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay? I mean, ABC was around before, but ABC was really put on the map by Bewitched. Yeah, you look at the Nielsen ratings the okay. years before, and then all of a sudden, yeah, it was there's, ABC. there's something. Exactly. Um, so how, but still, in the midst of Hollywood, and I found that with Elizabeth too, she was down to earth as well. Where does that come from? How do you know, how did he know to not get lost in, in, in the sense of what can be a very fake world? I'll tell you what, when you wake up in the morning, try this yourself. 
when you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes, what do you see? Do you see somebody next to you that you love? Do you walk down the stairs and see people that, that little tiny creations, at least for him, that he saw, that he walked walk past their room and see them sleeping in there and say, what am I put on this earth for? And then he said, okay, well, number one, protect these people and love them and make them and make it so they have an opportunity to grow up in the same uh, wonderful spirit that I am giving them or that the Lord is giving me, right? You carry that. And then when you walk out of your house, you have the same type of opportunity with everybody that you meet. And the great thing about it, Herbie, is that if you gag it one day, you have another opportunity the next and day he to knew fix that. it. And, and he, knew, he that. knew that. And that's what he taught me. He taught me how to be uh, a gentleman. You know, my wife does not put gas in her car. She doesn't open a door for herself. You know, just that kind of stuff where it's like kind of the, the old school. What are you, how are you supposed to treat other people or anything? Get them a glass of water if they're thirsty. Somebody comes into your home. You know, and how do you get that? And he instilled all of that in you. And when I remember to another, I have probably my favorite moment, really, is when he said, uh, when I met him, is when he said Bewitched was a love story. That's what it was, first and foremost, a love story. A love story. And you can see it. Yeah. You know, you watch that show, and, and even if you turn down the, the sound, you can see... Um, you can see Liz and Dad and we're together acting wonderfully like they were in total love. It didn't matter what was going on. And when he was upset with uh, Andorra or upset with the situ situation, there was no doubt that, that he was going to leave. Right. Nothing of that was going to happen. Even when we went to go to, to the bar to have a fake drink, Dad never drank. Um, uh, he would you know he would go talk about something that he's going to go back and work on. So that was right. It was a love story of two people from different worlds and accepting each other and just loving each other through it. And when you have that, so that's your workplace, right. and then you go home and do the same thing, and then that's over and everything's taken away from you, what is your? Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to be bitter and mad at everything? Or are you just going to spread the love the way that you can, mm -hmm. give away every dime you ever had, which is what he did, every dime he ever had, and then try to find money for other people that are less fortunate with you because you have, you have a place to sleep, you're not hungry, so why not help somebody else? So somebody else that needs a place mm -hmm. to sleep, or at least something warm to wear while they're mm -hmm. sleeping outside, and then they can get something to eat. And he, and he really was, I mean, I believe that when we leave this world, that we take all the joy and all the love with us and all the other stuff and all the pain, you know, the, the, the I'd argument. I'd like to say that we leave the joy and the love. We, we leave the joy? We leave it here for other people well, to enjoy. Yes. Well, yes. But he's, he, I think we leave it and we take it. Okay. Okay? And only There's room for both. Only because he brought so much joy with Bewitched and then to millions, and then the, the special intimate moments that he brought to individuals on a daily basis in real life, I mean, is, is just a shattering, incredible amount of love. Herbie, I was so surprised over this. If it wasn't, wasn't for um, like the David Pierce's and the, uh, and the Mark Simpson of the world. Adam, and, and Adam Michael James. And Adam Michael James. I wouldn't even know this existed. I, I have just been brought into this you know, this really cool, wonderful world in the last couple years. I didn't know it existed. I just knew my, my dad, who happened to be on a show, was an awesome dad, and I love him and miss him, and miss him Barry. And we all miss him, too. Kind of a lot. Yep. We all miss him. Yeah. I can tell you what it means that you're here um, representing um, everything that was good about the wish, certainly representing your father, and bless you for coming here. Will you stick around with the panel because we're going to do a Q&A with the audience? I, I have to. I, I need a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Here's York, everyone. We'll be right back.